It's week two of my four-week stay here in Colombia, and now we're in Bogota, and we're going to hit the flea markets, the street vendors, the shops, anywhere we can for some games. So let's go see what we find. Hey guys, how's it going? Here we are once again, Bogota, Colombia. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. As you can see, everybody's out and about, walking around, enjoying their beautiful Sunday. Here's the first flea market I'm gonna hit today, but for now, I'm gonna hit these outdoor vendors here, see what we find. Had a little bit of overflow, but we're gonna hit the main market now. Nothing, uh, nothing of interest there. But I'm gonna be in, uh, I'm in Colombia for four weeks. So I just got to Bogota from Medellin. Medellin was beautiful. Check out my episode if you haven't. And uh, we're gonna be in Bogota for the next four weeks. So that's, uh, I'm gonna be able to hit three Sundays here. So hopefully we'll get some good stuff. I'm going to use all my expertise on everything I know about. That's pretty much video games, watches, old toys, old uh, guitar stuff. Any, anything I know about, I'm going to use to my 100% capabilities. And hopefully we find some stuff in the next four weeks. So it's December in Bogota and that means uh, the holidays are coming up so people uh, do tend to come out more and sell more stuff so hopefully we do find some uh, some great items and um, I'm, I'm looking at everything this time so I'm looking at toys and whatever I pretty much know a little bit about so hopefully uh, I can put it to good use kind of like right now where I see some spoons um, I always check spoons for the silver mark um, I do see some marks on this. It says Meneses. Meneses is a, a silver company, which, um, you know, they, they always have the marks on there. So I did pick up those four spoons because they are uh, 0 0.925 silver. And um, if you know a little bit about silver, you know that that's, you know, that's a good sign that it is an actual silver plated, uh, uh, so, sorry, sterling silver spoon. So I'm going to look those up at a later time and see what's up. Uh, here's uh, my first Sony, little Sony radio. I remember having this as a kid, I think. And uh, yeah, it's it's probably a little valuable uh, right now because it is a vintage toy, but too big for me to be carrying around at this moment. So I did pass on that. It's really It's really hard to not pick stuff up like that sometimes. Uh, here's some Epcot, Disney, uh, Betamax tapes. Anything Disney is pretty pretty valuable uh, or will be valuable. So I always try to buy some Disney stuff. I did pick those two up for 15000 Here we have some Famicom tapes, the usual multi-carts that I've grown pretty fond of after all my vis visits to Bogota. So I did pick those up. Um, I think five each, 5000 each, which is about $1.50. And here, um, here at these flea markets, you see a lot of that stuff. So here's some watches. Um, the thing about watches for me is that I don't really know a lot about them. I know the basic stuff. I know what to look for. I know some brands, you know, what to look for there. And, you know, I know that old digitals are in right now. The old Casio digital, Seiko digitals. Um, you know, don't pick up a Rolex that has a rubber wristband, kind of like this one. Uh, really well made though for a Rolex 
People do collect knockoff, but I'm gonna pass on that. Kind of like I'm gonna pass on this uh, knockoff Wii U Wii controller. So we just finished the first flea market. Now we're at Parque Periodista. We're going to the the next clump of flea markets where there's three in a row. <clears throat> we didn't find anything except for the the silver spoons, which I mentioned to you guys. I'm gonna use all my expertise on everything. Don't really know a lot, but I know just enough about everything to get by. You know, you see a lot of stuff at flea markets that you don't necessarily collect or know about or buy, but then you start realizing that people do collect that stuff. So you um, start researching and looking into stuff like that. So that's how I figured out, uh, you know, about watches and about silver, about gold, about old radios, old cameras and, and things like that, old pens. And uh, also for my, my uh, old storage unit, hunting days I used to go to storage auctions and I, I learned a lot through those days about the value of items so it's pretty cool uh, to have that knowledge and you know to finally put it to use uh, we're still looking for video games though I haven't found anything except for a few knockoffs so on to the next Let's go. I always find this this flea market in particular very interesting because it's it's so small and there's such a tiny space to work with vendor wise and there's so many people just trying to get through so um, yeah there's such it's really overwhelming because there's so much stuff to to look through and people are trying to get by and people are screaming their prices and and whatnot so yeah it's interesting I don't think I've ever really found anything in this one. But there's an Xbox, old Xbox. Nothing to report there. Nothing crazy. So now we're at the next flea market. And these Dreamcast keyboards, uh, if you watched episode 3, you saw that I purchased a few. And uh, this guy has a bunch. And um, I never really asked him how he got them. But I did end up buying the three that he had there. O sea, alguien se les vendió en un lote. Sí, sí, sí. Un tipo tenía... Lo que pasa es que había un tipo que vendía mercancía en cantidades. Yeah. El señor se murió hace como unos 10 años. Y en la casa tenía de todo eso que le había llegado. Y porque dejó. el hombre había traído un container para distribuir para todo el país. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. O sea, el señor se murió y no alcanzó como... A... Gracias. Y entonces el hombre se murió y no, y no alcanzaron. Entonces eh, la señora o los hijos comenzaron a sacar todas las cosas. Y algún día entonces me mostraron esto, yo le dije listo, yo le compro todo esto y le compré como 200. Yo tengo como 100, 100, 120 más o menos. Y ha vendido mucho. Si usted me compra bastante, le doy barato. Por docenas, sabía como si me compro una docena, sabía como la, la docena, 150. Ya. Yeah. And there's a story of how he got them. So, now we know. Uh, he always has, he always seems to have them there. So, um, I was always curious. So. Now we know that uh, he's always going to have them, basically, because he has about 120 left. So th those sell pretty well in the U.S. They'll sell for about 20, 25 to 30 dollars each, and I just bought them for what is it? Not even 10 dollars. I bought them for like seven dollars each. So that's a good little jump. Picked up this old Casio calculator. Um, have a friend who collects calculators, so that's a good buy right there. Now we're at the last flea market, the San, Al San Alejo flea market. Flea market that's been covered by many, many YouTube channels and TV shows. So it's become a little popular as a tourist stop here in Bogota when you're visiting. But you can still find some gems here from time to time. Here at this table, there's some video games, um, a lot of old toys. Um, I'm eyeing all the stuff that has Simpsons on it. Love The Simpsons. I never really collected Simpsons stuff, but I always look through it just in case. It's like a shampoo holder. Here's a tile game. And one of these little promotional games um, didn't end up making a deal with the young lady there. She wanted 65 for all three, and I offered 60. She said no, so I walked away. 
Here's a console called the Fun Station. Uh, PS1, 2, and uh, PS1 and 2 already built in games. Pretty interesting. Hey guys, so we went to the flea market Sunday. We found a bunch of stuff, and uh, it's during the week now. There are no flea markets during the week. So um, I went to a couple of shops, nothing too crazy. And uh, yesterday I went to go buy an iPhone cable, which I needed. And uh, I found a little mall with electronics and whatnot. And they ended up finding one little shop that had, uh, you know, iPhone stuff in cases and whatnot. And then they had one controller and an Xbox. They had nothing to do with each other, but I ended up uh, finding this uh, this Sega PlayStation 2 controller, which is really weird. I, I had never seen it before. First time I ever see it. Um, it's actually a Sega made PlayStation 2 controller. It's called the Surfwave. It's called the Surfwave PlayStation 2 wireless controller. Um, Looking a little bit more into it, I found out that um, it was made by Sega, officially licensed for Sony PlayStation, PlayStation 2, back in 2005. Uh, very limited run, made in Japan, only in Japan for sale for US PlayStations, not for Jap Japanese PlayStations. And uh, apparently it's really um, not, I don't want to say super rare, but it's, it's pretty rare uh, to find. And as you can see, it's uh, it's pretty clean. I'm gonna take it out of the box right now. Um, you know, finding finding stuff like this is is what this is what this is all about. You know, uh, finding rare items that you know you don't necessarily find in the U.S. or don't necessarily see in the wild too much. So we're gonna start with the the little wireless card that you put into the um, the memory card slot. And then the controller itself, which is pretty pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it was uh, fifty thousand pesos, which is about sixteen dollars US. And uh, I think I got a good deal on it. I'm not really sure about rarity of it or a value. Couldn't really find much online about it. But um, if I had to guess, I'd say you know at least fifty dollars or you know a nice trade here and there. Um, it's just really cool seeing the Sega logo with the PlayStation logo on the same piece of hardware. All right, so here's the, um, here's the controller. We have the, the regular D-pad stuff, the two analogs, regular PlayStation buttons. You have a select and start button, and then you have a vibration on off button here, a power turbo button here, a mode button here. Then you have your regular L R L L two and uh, whatnot, and apparently this lights up LED uh, blue when you're playing it. So pretty interesting uh, piece here, and um, yeah, hopefully during the week we'll find uh, some more items. And uh, I think I have uh, I have some leads to some Facebook groups here in Colombia, and I'm gonna be contacting some people because they have some pretty interesting items. And, uh, you know, after all the negotiations, uh, I might meet someone tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday. Uh, so I might be meeting up with them to see what kind of items they have. And if it's anything like uh, stuff like this, then I'll be a buyer. So stay tuned. Um, hopefully we'll get some more stuff. Hey guys, so we're, uh, it's about 9 a.m. right now, 9.30. And uh, I got a call from the guy that uh, I was talking on the Facebook group. And he said uh, he wants to come to a deal with what we were talking about, some Nintendo stuff. So we're gonna go and meet up with him at Parque Periodista, which is two blocks from my house. So that's pretty convenient for me. So we're gonna go meet up with him, come up with the price, and hopefully we get some good stuff I can show you in a bit. So when he finally showed up, he starts pulling stuff out of the bag. Sounds familiar. What's in the bag? What's that yellow thing? What else is in the bag? That stack up, is it real? How about that Mega Man 2? Find out next episode. Make sure you subscribe below to get notifications about when I post the next episode.